Hello everybody and welcome to this latest video where we're looking at some acrylic techniques and in particular in this demonstration I'm going to show you how to do some dry brushing technique to get the effect of animal fur and I'm going to be painting a hair. Before I start with the painting I'm just going to run through the equipment that I'm using. I have some watercolour paper and in a moment you'll see how I've drawn out the image first. I'm using one of these disposable palettes so that I can just put it in the bin afterwards. You can use any palette and I will include in the project sheet some information on how to make a stay wet palette so that your acrylic paint doesn't dry out too quickly. I have a jar of water um, but I won't be using very much of this. I'm going to start by blocking in some darker tones into the background. So what I'm going to do is if I raise this up to the camera, you can see how behind the grass you get these little dark areas. And also behind the lighter parts of the fur is a dark background. And so we need to paint that in first because it would be completely impossible to paint the darker colours around the fine detail at the end. So this is one of the beauties of acrylic paint, that you can paint light over the top of dark and really start with the tonal work, which gives your image some body and form. The other things that we'll need to pay attention to when we get to painting, um, in this particular painting on the hair, is how there is light and shade and shadows around different parts of the hair's anatomy. So when we come to put the fur on, we'll be doing that differentially and building up some lighter areas. But we can also do that partially with the tonal background painting. So it's probably best if I just get started and show you what I mean. So starting with the grass, I've got some blue and some yellow on the palette and a little touch of red to knock back the intensity of the green. I've also got some brown which I will use to darken the green. And I very rarely use green directly from the tube because the colours are far too intense. So as always start with the lightest colour when you're colour mixing. So I'm going to go into my yellow into the middle tiny touch of water, really just on the very tip of the brush. You may not be able to see this, but I'm just putting the corner, touching the top of the water, and that's enough. If I need a bit more, I can always go back and get some. By using a cadmium yellow, I've al already taken the edge off this green, um, which would be look much more vibrant with a lemon yellow. Now I'm going to add a touch of brown and keep adding brown and blue until I make it darker. And you can see the effect that this is happening, this is having, as I pull this paint out from the original colour. You may not actually need this red. So in colour mixing I start with quite a small amount of paint because it might not be right and I don't want to waste a lot of paint. There's always a chance you might have to remove this from the palette and start again. So rather than put lots out, I just start with a little bit. And that's quite a nice dark green. So I particularly want this painted in this area in front of the hair where the dark background really brings out the highlights on the front where the light is hitting the fur. Now just a little touch more water 
I'm going to go in and start outlining, blocking in in front of the hair's face. I will allow the colour to vary a little bit as I go around, so there's slightly more yellow in areas and a bit more blue in other areas, just to give it some interest. And just using the side of the brush I can Follow the line of the hair and get this nice clean line. Don't need to worry too much if you go over the edge and this is why we paint the background first because it always gives you a chance to then bring our subject matter over the top of the background. Need to mix up some more paint. So now I'm confident that this is the right colour mixture I can mix up a lot more. And it's if it is a particularly warm day and you're working with acrylic it can dry very quickly and it's a good idea to just mix a bit as you go along and keep adding to it. I need some more blue. And as I get close to the ground, I'm adding more brown because it's a little bit more colours are more earthy around here, so I'm just going to vary this. When you pick up the texture of the paper here, you can just touch it in with a bit of add a bit of water and use the tip of the brush to really push that paint into the texture of the paper. too neat with this because I want to get the feeling of the roughness of the ground so it doesn't have to be perfectly flat in fact it's better if it isn't
and I'm going to add some lighter tone towards the top. So I've still got the previous remains of the colour on the palette and I've added some more cadmium yellow and some Naples yellow. I've switched to a slightly larger brush to let me get some coverage quite quickly. And the Naples yellow with a touch of white in it allows the paint to be quite opaque and that means I can cover the dark background more effectively. Make that a bit lighter. adding a bit more water now just to be able to allow me to be a little bit more precise with some of these marks and in fact I'm going to use a smaller brush and I'm back to the filbert brush now all this is doing is building texture and interest in the background getting the feeling of this rough grass with very quick marks. And now I'm going to leave that to dry. It doesn't matter that I've gone over the top of the hair because I'll be painting that afterwards. And once I have painted the hair, I may need to bring some of these grasses up over the top of the hair. So there will be some more work on the background towards the end, but the main blocking in is done. come back from my break and had a look at this and decided that actually I want to do some more work into the background because I think it's still a bit too dark at the top and some of the greens are a little bit brown. So I've actually put some cobalt blue onto the palette now with the cadmium yellow and I'm also using some white to make it opaque and lighter and I'm just going to add some of these greens with a, a smaller round brush What I want to do is vary the colour as I go along, so adding touches of yellow and more blue to vary it.
Hello everybody. So you're joining me now at a much later part of this process than I would have liked, but unfortunately the video didn't save and where you left it, it was completely white. So the process that I've just been through is that I laid out some new colours on the palette, I cleaned my water and now I have some white, I have the Naples yellow, cadmium yellow, burnt umber and some of the ultramarine. If you don't have Naples yellow you can just mix it with white and gold ochre. And what I've been doing is to paint in the colours in the background of the fur. And the majority of the fur that I look at, almost everything in fact, is a light highlight on top of a darker background. And so those darker backgrounds has to go in first. The only area where there are darker bristles is around the whiskers here and there's one hair here and perhaps a few around the eyes. So I started by blocking in the different colours, making sure to have a really nice dark colour in the background where I'm going to have the light fur on top. With acrylic, to get it to blend smoothly from one colour to the other, it needs to be quite dry. So don't be tempted to stick your brush in the water because you will get a bit of a streaky mess. I'm trying to do just leave a few highlights to show me still where the form of the hair is but have enough darkness in the background to make the beautiful golden tips of the fur really stand out. So when I put the highlights on for the fur, what I'll be doing is leaving gaps. So where the shadow of the ear is, I'll have to leave that alone apart from a few quite muted bristles. But in these areas, I'm going to be using a very golden creamy color for the bristles on the top. So I'm just going to go and clean my water again. Now I've allowed some time for the paint to dry, I can start working the highlights on the top. So I have my picture in front of me as reference. I'm going to use this angled shader because it means that I can vary the length of the line by changing the angle that I hold it. If I want it to be a long line, the full width of the brush, I need to hold it flat. But if I tip it upwards, I just get the very tip of the brush. So it allows me some variation. And for the much finer lines, I'll use the small uh, round brush with a fine tip. Clean the water again. So that's fresh and I'm just mixing up some of this golden brown colour. Having a variation on the palette with some of the lighter and darker colours that I might need. So you can see there by just using the tip I get quite a short line. Whereas when I come to some of the longer fur here I can use more of the full width of the brush and get a longer mark. 
just looking at this colour, I think it needs a little bit more warmth in it. Now I'm working around the shape of this shadow of the ear to keep that as a nice solid dark shape. I want to make sure here that the fur is going around the form of the body. So think about the direction that you take with the brush. If you have too much paint on the brush it can blob a little bit so it's good to try and keep it fairly dry if you can do and that's what I was doing by just wiping some of it off onto the palette. It allows me to have a much finer line because the paintbrush is not so loaded with the paint. So here I'm leaving all of the darker background showing to have this shadow that goes around what is likely the hair's kind of elbow. Touch of water because it's drying out slightly.
why I'm mixing a lighter colour because where the fur is lighter underneath it needs to be a bit lighter to stand out on the top. I'm going to go back in with some darker colour just in some areas that I where I missed a little bit of background so just a bit on this paw needs to be knocked back a little bit hairs in the shadow I have got a very watered down version of the same colour and because it's very wet I need to get rid of most of it onto a bit of tissue and then be very careful about putting it on here. So this gives me a more dilute transparent muted version of the same colour which should work well in the shadow. I'm being very gentle in the way that I put this on and a bit around the back here so it almost looks bluish with the brown behind it Now the final touches are going to be the eye and the whiskers and also this very white line that goes on the ear. So just loading up the brush. Clean the brush and then we want a kind of amber colour for the eye. So now I need a touch of red just to get a very slight hint of orange so I don't need a lot on the palette. That's probably enough just from what's on the rim. And around the back portion it's slightly shaded where the eyeball is in shadow. So I'm going to add a touch of brown now. There's even a little shadow at the top from the hair's eyelashes. And at the front I'm going to add a touch of white. just where it looks a little bit more glassy. I 
And now I need a really good black for the outline. I'm going to use my burnt umber and some ultramarine. Adding a little bit more water to this mixture because it needs to be fluid enough to paint distinct shapes. I don't want to risk it being very textured. It's often the eye that really brings everything together and now while I have this black I'll just water it down a little bit more so it's very fluid because I want to be able to paint the bristles very finely so taking the excess off the brush and just leaving the tip very fine Paint the nose first actually. The rest of the bristle is against the dark background catching the light so that needs to continue as a light colour. And then the final touch is to go back into this background and bring some of these strands up and over the top. 
of the hair. So I'm going to do that with this wedge brush again, just mixing some more green. And in a minute I will do the same thing but with the creamier beige colour. Add some variation here in the green colour. I need a little bit more white for this and it can be very tempting at the end of the painting to try and make do with what's on the palette but my white has started drying and become a bit congealed and I'll never get the results that I want with it like that so always best to start afresh however frustrating that might be. And I've mixed that too dark so I need a bit more. And that's done.